Hello King's Fine Woodworking. This is Ryan. Thank you James so much for allowing me to be a part of this build off. The chair I built for the competition is made out of curly maple, uh, walnut, and um, and then obviously I laminated the back uh, with walnut and maple. And here's a little clip of uh, me starting my project. So I had some walnut and maple that's been in my shop for quite a while. One of those deals where you go to the hardwood store and see some nice wood and you decide to keep it. So this was the perfect opportunity to use it up. I had one board of this curly maple that was about 10 feet long by seven, eight inches wide. So I had to do a really good job about planning ahead and um, having enough for this whole project, which is actually quite a challenge. So it was fun to be able to resaw all this wood because I was able to book match the arms and also the back legs, which gave it a really cool effect. When you buy the plans from King's Fine Woodworking, you can also buy the templates. And so I went ahead and made all the templates ahead of time. And it's a really easy process of just being able to trace everything out so you can cut it to the perfect size. Using the templates and the plans, I went ahead and mapped everything out so that I could be sure to have enough wood for the entire project. In the true spirit of King's Fine Woodworking, I decided to use some glue and then some more glue and then way too much glue. And right here I'm laminating the maple in between the two pieces of walnut, which will be for the back slats. Now that the glue has dried, I'm going ahead and making the back slats the final thickness of one and a half inches. And make sure your stock is an inch and a half thick, otherwise you're going to have uh, spacing issues when you go to install these. These boards are about seven, seven and a half inches wide, so I ended up having the nest the back slats together and I had to definitely plan ahead and really draw these out well because you can see I'm all the way to the edge and I had just enough for all 13 slats. And by going straight down my lines I was able to keep each piece the exact same width. Now rest assured, if you use the plans that King's Fine Woodworking laid out, you are not going to have to worry about the yield of your wood like I am. Having a bandsaw here was a big help, but you could easily do this with a jigsaw. You could almost do this entire project with a jigsaw and a good sander. And there are a lot of different ways you can cut these parts. You can use the templates that you already made and use a pattern bit and use your router or you can use a jigsaw. Um, but for me, the bandsaw was super quick. I cut the parts out in about 30 minutes. And for all the ends and the straight pieces, I went ahead and left it proud so that I could come back and sneak up on the line with my sander and get it perfect. Then I clamped all the back slats together and then spent some time getting all the bandsaw marks off and everything nice and even. And with some scrap from the back slats, I went ahead and drew out my own armrest trying to mimic the back slats. If you'd like to see a template of this, let me know and I can draw one up. And off camera, I actually cut the tops of these at 5 degrees. That way when you mount them, 
they will follow the armrest and not have any kind of gap. And you'll be able to see that later on in the project. It's hard to see here, but I actually have a jig for the wheels. And I made mine obviously out of wood and made them a perfect four inch diameter so they would fit with the mounting holes. Between the disc sander and the spindle sander, I was able to shape everything and uh, smooth everything to size. In the King's Fine Woodworking build, you'll see how James does this cut, but this is just to make the connection from the back leg to the front stretcher have a perfect joint. It's totally optional, but it makes a nice clean look if you happen to look at it from underneath. So all I have left to do is cut the bottom seat slats and front legs. Those are the only pieces I needed to use um, my table saw for. So using my makeshift router table here, I'm rounding over as many pieces as I can. I'm just being sure not to round over any pieces that are gonna mate together uh, when assembling the chair. So off camera, I went ahead and mocked up my seat slats and uh, cut them on the miter saw. So now I'm just rounding back over the ends. Had a hard time here trying to decide what I wanted to do to the front stretcher to kind of commemorate the chair build off. I really thought I was going to inlay uh, all of this into the front stretcher, but I also thought about epoxy, but didn't want to make it look too tacky. So I ended up laminating a piece of maple on top of walnut and I used a V-bit and it made it look really cool and three-dimensional. So I'm plugging all of my screw holes. So I first use a Forzner bit. This is a half inch Forzner bit. And then um, I'll go ahead and attach them by pre-drilling the wood and using my screws. I go ahead and also use a pin nailer just for alignment to hold everything together so I can be sure to have everything exactly where I want it placed. And the pin nails uh, are so thin that it doesn't affect my drills or any of my screws. I'm using really beefy number 10 uh, SPAC screws and GRK screws. And this just makes for a rock solid connection and don't have to worry over time about it ever wiggling loose. Each one of these screws is almost like using a bolt. But using such a big screw, you definitely want to make sure you pre-drill everything uh, that you're screwing into. Off camera, I attach the front stretcher. Now, it can be a little tricky, so the best way to do it if you're by yourself is to actually add a little bit of CA glue before you attach your screws. And that'll hold it together just uh, enough to be able to get all your screws lined up. Now to get everything as perfectly square and flushed as you can, I went ahead and 
just clamped on a spacer on the bottom so I could sit the back slats onto and then drove in my screws and I went with the middle and outside pieces first and then I will actually connect the the back cradle and arms to it from there and then finish my back slats and then following James's lead on his build video I made a jig to be able to space the front arm exactly where where it needs to be skipping ahead a little bit we're using the pin nailer when you're installing the back slats by yourself is a huge help so after doing that the easiest way for me for me to make sure everything was square and straight was to go ahead and clamp on the back cradle and uh, line up my two edge pieces about an eighth of an inch from the arms itself and then driving in one screw. I marked the centers for each cradle below and above so that I can line that middle back stretcher up. And then after doing that I uh, did every other so I could get my spacing good and um, then just attach the bottoms. I then drew a straight line so that I could pre-drill with my half inch Forzener bit uh, across the back cradle and uh, this was actually took me quite a while to draw that line nice and straight because it's going to be super visible in my chair build because those are going to be maple plugs and you definitely see the inconsistencies if you don't take the time to line all that up really well. You might wonder why this top cradle is important. It holds the back slats um, nice and evenly spaced, especially as the seasons change outside and it gets rained on. Those are going to try and move and twist. So having this ensures that they're going to stay nice and straight over time. My process here was I went ahead and screwed in the middle slat to the back cradle. And then I leveled it out really well and then just screwed them in from the back as you see here but you need to pull it pretty tight so that you get the a good screw connection since you're coming in from the back side this was very satisfying so because we cut the five degree angle uh, before i cut out the arm supports I was able to get a perfect connection with that arm tapering back five degrees then I was very careful of exactly where I put my screws so they wouldn't come through since it was a very uh, narrow piece. So here we are in the home stretch. I'm just attaching the seat slats using a 1 8 spacer in between each slat, which gives it a perfect spacing all the way to the front rail. So here begins the dowel and plug marathon using a uh, contrasting dowels uh, for the different areas of the chair and with a good flush trim saw you can get these almost perfectly flush with minimal marking on the wood so you don't have too much sanding at all this took me about 30 minutes to do and i think it's definitely worth the time i'm already taking orders for these chairs i will be making them out of yellow pine and cedar and i will stain the cedar a walnut color so it'll have a very similar contrast to this chair and I finished those with total boat halcyon finish here I'm um, going ahead and wiping everything down with mineral spirits and I'm turning my rag so that I don't accidentally get some of the walnut dust into the maple off camera I pop the grain on all of the curly maple just to give it that much more depth and I just use trans tent walnut dye and I mixed it in with shellac and wiped it on then sanded it off and it really made that maple pop once I got the finish on and this is general finishes armor seal and I use that just because it's, again this is never going to be outside and it just makes that grain pop that much more I put about five or six coats on here and sanded it in between all the way up to my final coat of 2000 grit, giving it a butter smooth feel. And then finally finished it with a coat of wax. So I figured in reality these chairs might get moved once or twice a year. So instead of buying an off the shelf 
wheel, I thought it'd look nicer making one out of wood. And all I did here was use a 3 8 inch bolt, a fender washer, a bearing flange that I found at the big box store. And that, that works as a bearing almost for the wheels and gives it nice smooth action. A little bit of wax in there and these wheels roll great. And with that, the project is complete. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.